on that one. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the church this morning. I hope you all had a good weekend. Uh, just in case the pastor misses, uh, just pay attention to those uh, announcements in your bulletin. And I'd like to welcome everyone again, and if you're visiting uh, and you need something, just say something to somebody. I don't really see any visitors today. Check, check. A little better now. Got to get right on it. Pretty awesome. Okay, so um, if you'll pray with me, bow your heads, please. Y'all pray. Thank you for the blessing of another day in which we can praise your holy name. We invite you, Lord, to join us in this church today. Father, we ask you to bless those persons in attendance today, whether they are here in this building or watching or listening on our online broadcast. And we ask you to grant traveling mercies to those who are traveling. As we partake, as we partake in Holy Communion today, help us to remember the sacrifice you made by allowing your son to suffer an unimaginable death for the sins of mankind. We ask you now to bless this service and we hope that all we say and do will be pleasing in your eyes. We praise you, Holy Father, and seek your blessings through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome to church. Welcome to the undying body of the ever-living Son, where God's promises and God's people are radically made one. Welcome to the romance of the world, the marriage ceremony of Christ, where God is betrothed to man by proposing with his life. Welcome the only place where the unholy can meet holiness and yet holy still survives. Welcome to the only place that you can walk in dead and yet come out alive. Welcome to this place, this place, whether on pews or chairs, in walls or air, under steeples or stairs, by thousands or in pairs, this place, this place is legendary, holy, ancient, modern, famous, hated, living, vibrant, ageless, not because of a location. Not because there are cars parked on the pavement. Not because you made a sign and named it. This place is an amazement because of the one who creates it. Welcome to the place where individuals are shaped into a larger whole. Where bread and wine feed our hearts and intoxicate our souls. Where race, money, and power no longer have a role. Where the outcast, impoverished, and broken come to be consoled. Welcome to our home, the bride of Christ on a reckless search. Welcome to life. Welcome to church. Okay. Okay, if you'll stand, we will sing. Jesus is all the world to me. It's hymn number 469. The words proceed on the screen. Verses 1, 3, and 4. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mayor Seaver. It's now time for our testimony section of the service. Uh, I don't know if anybody's been given microphones. Maybe somebody can help out today. Oh, okay, we got it. And if you have a testimony, please raise your hand. Well, I would just like to say that I have a order in my Sunday for my Get the microphone there, Carol. I had an A order on my um, and then I said, you know, it's very dangerous, you should break, and I would be gone, but I had to have a test a couple days ago, and it has to change within one year, so I thank God for that. Very good. Thank you, man. last year, I always expressed a prayer for my brother. Yes. In a year ago today, he's been gone. I miss you all right. I really miss him. He, he lived a long time in our yard for him to leave him. And I still love him to fight with him. It's a nice long time. Can you say hi? <laughs> Can you wave up? <laughs> Today we celebrate two years from the day we were able to adopt this show. Are there others? Okay, not seeing any. Uh, Mary, it is your turn. And you might want to use this. I just want you to know I thank God for being in my life and for helping me with a lot of things with them. And if you have things going on in your life, give it to Him and pray with Him. I promise. Reading today is from Psalm 138. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple. And give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord. For they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord. For great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lovely. But the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his promise for me. Your steadfast love, O oh Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Thank you. That was the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Okay, it's time for Bonnie to come down and do kingdom builders. All the children come up. Okay, the big thing that we need to know, and we 
need to think about is that all the children in our church are a gift to us. And it is the responsibility, not just of their parents, but of everyone in here to support the children and to help them grow to what they are called to be and who they are called to be. And Jesus, the children were, of course, very important to Jesus. And he and his disciples were in the village and they were preaching. And Jesus sat down and all these children rushed over to him. And that's when he said, or the parents were like, oh, I'm sure it was the parents. He said, oh, don't bother the Lord. Get back here. Don't bother Jesus. And Jesus said, do not hinder the little children, let all of them come to me. And uh, everyone in here probably knows the song, or you're working with their nature. That's who else wants the song. Uh, Jesus loves the little children. You all remember that when you were little? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I want all of us to sing. And buddy, we're going to sing to you, okay? Yeah. Curtis, Curtis. 
Beverly Pingree, uh, one of my nephew's best friends. What was that name? Beverly Pingree. Oh, yes. Is there anyone else? Rebecca Lynch, good friend of ours. Uh, she's battling a lot of diseases and been waiting a uh, cancer screen. Any others? Oh. Who was the name? Her name is Chrissy. Chrissy. Okay. Chrissy Atkins family in our prayers support at Seattle and Mass on Tuesday from Over Racing. He's a third cousin of mine through my stepdad, Harold Cross. Okay. Is there anyone else? <coughs> I think I got in the cage. Yeah, please uh, continue to keep my son and daughter in law in prayer. Jeremiah and April Halstead, and also my daughter Christine in Korea. She's got some kind of syndrome, something I can hardly pronounce it. That's causing a lot of problems. Okay. Anyone else? Well, this is time for everyone to keep the uh, family of the young man, the teenager, the pastor, uh, that lived on Holly Hills. Um, we also had a, a young man at Chattanooga Middle School who put an end to his life this week. Um, and also Mrs. White, I don't know her first name, but her children are teachers and board members. If you would please keep the Cook family in your prayers. This week is one year since you lost your office. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. 
We'll, uh, we're going to try this on the student choir. It's one we've done before, but really it's about the one we kept, went through this morning and kind of got through it. It was a lot rougher than we thought. Yeah.
probably about the next three hours, if we're honest. Um, we had this unique hybrid way of doing things. Uh, and if it taught us anything, it's that annual conference works much better when we're all uh, together. Uh, I will give you the results of everything uh, that was decided at our annual conference when they released the official uh, transcripts of it because there were, you can ask John, so many uh, amendments and substitutions and retractions and that after a while I just stopped trying to write it in my notebook because there wasn't any more space to mark out and write it again. Um, I can tell you that some of the things that did change uh, were uh, the clergy insurance providers are changing. Uh, we are restructuring how the West Virginia Annual Conference works. So we used to have uh, seven district superintendents, and I believe it is that we are going down to five now. Uh, for instance, our district superintendent, Joe, who just used to be over Midland South, is now over Midland South and the Western District. So he's gone from Charleston to Huntington. Uh, so you need to you need to pray for Joe and keep uh, keep him in your prayers. Uh, so it, these are all things that are changing uh, for the better, so that we can be more responsible uh, with the funds that the conference uses and things like that. It's always been the commitment to the conference that we would be responsible. So they're making changes for that. But like I said, when when the official book comes out, you know, we can have a meeting and talk about it. <laughs> We're going to begin this. Morning. Mark chapter 3, beginning in verse 20. And it says, Then he went home, and the crowd gathered again so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, He's out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, He's possessed by the Elphaba. And by the prince of demons, he cast out demons. And he called them to him and said to them in parables, how can Satan? Something turned on, yeah. The bell turned on, okay. That was like the voice from on high. Just turn it off, okay, we can do that. <laughs> Lord, I pray that you take me and hide me behind your cross, that this is your word, 
your word, Lord, so that we might be reached, so that lives might be transformed, so that we might come to you maybe for the first time or maybe coming back after such a long time. So, Father, in all things, we pray that this is your word and it is for your glory alone, Lord. Not mine, just yours. But in all things, Father, we urgently want to hear from you so that we all may be transformed by it. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, Jesus went home. Well, first he called his disciples. Then he went home. Well, actually, first he healed a man on the Sabbath, got into a theological debate, called his inner circle, and went home. Well, he tried to. The last time he tried to go home, someone carved a hole in his roof and lowered a paralyzed man down to him. So, you know, Jesus weak. Looks like someone dug a hole in his roof, lowered a paralyzed man down, he got yelled at for picking grain. Before that, he was baptized. He was chased out by chased, uh, chased out some demons, healed some folks just about everywhere he went, was constantly sought out at, was constantly being argued at. He called his disciples, got into a theological debate, and then he went home. You ever had a week like that? Well, man, it just seems like everything. Well, it gets, it gets better. Jesus has been doing and preaching all these amazing things, and he goes home and finds out his family thinks he's crazy, and they're coming to stop him. He's a, while he's gathered together in the house, he's accused of being in line with the devil. And he points out, or excuse me, and then he's informed his, his family's outside. And, I, and I, this would just be one of those times when you would just have to lean back in your chair a little bit, take a breath, and go, really? <laughs> but he, he says something, and we can have a hard time understanding when we look at it. Because if I could paraphrase, he might say, my family's outside. Well, who's my family? It, it can start to look like Jesus is, is breaking away from his biological family. Like he's saying, if they don't want anything to do with me, I'm not going to have anything to do with them. However, what he says next is important and lays the foundation for what he's trying to teach here. Because what he says are, my family are those who do the will of God. That's one of the many reasons why we call each other brothers and sisters in Christ. For together we are the family of God. Jesus helps to understand something in this reading. He helps us to understand what home is and what family is. I can remember when I came home from college after being gone for five years. And uh, that's what happens when you change your degree three times. So when I came home, the only problem was that it really didn't feel like home anymore. Amazingly, things kept right on going. I uh, kept right on moving and changing whether or not I was there or not. Coming home after being gone for 13 years was even more difficult. My parents no longer lived in the house I grew up in. Friends and family had moved on or passed on. Every, everything was different. So what was home didn't look like the home I remembered anymore. Home isn't always what I think it is. And that can be home. That can be hard. Home is where our family is, and, and home can seemingly change suddenly. Into this struggle of an ever-changing world, Jesus asked the question, Who is your family? Now, in West Virginia, that can be a deep question. Because we have people who have, have no blood relation to us whatsoever that we can claim as family, and we have folks that are blood reagent relation that, well, we just don't talk about. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you can get into trouble by asking who someone's family is. Well, I thought you were related to us. <laughs> now, who your family is can change who you are, too. If I'm back in Elkview, I'm one of four people Depending on which side I'm up on, if I'm on the side that's closer to Pinch, then I'm usually either Tom's son or Craig's brother. If I go to the side that's closer to Clendenin, then I'm either Beth's husband or Betty's son-in-law. <laughs> Who your family is 
where your home is defines who you are. And Jesus asks, who's your family? Who's my family? And he answers that question. He says, our family ultimately are those who do the will of God. So what he might be praising is you have a bigger family than you might have first suspected. He says, look around, see your brothers and your sisters, and realize you have a large extended family. And one of the best ways I've ever thought of explaining this is, is cousins. Because cousins are their own unique system of family in Appalachia. They could be as close as a brother and sister or that person you see every decade, but they're still family and you fight for them. And I kind of always kind of thought about that. No matter where you might go in this world, if you can find somebody that believes in God, you found a cousin. Somebody that's family. Whether you see them every day or not, doesn't matter. They're family. Now, I will say something here that should surprise anybody. Now, sometimes can, family can be troublesome. <laughs> if you haven't realized that yet, you do must be fresh and married. <laughs> Give it one. <laughs> or extremely young. <laughs> Jesus' blood relation is there. He's been teaching and preaching. He's been combating against the Pharisees and what they've been saying. He's been doing miracles. And they're outside and they're there to put a stop to them. Because if you've never read the way things move throughout the gospel. Jesus' brothers and sisters, we assume sisters, don't believe him until after the resurrection. If you follow the story of uh, James, the brother of Christ, it starts here, where he's here to stop Jesus. It ends up after the resurrection, with James committing to the point that he's the first bishop of Jerusalem, and is willingly thrown off the temple that recanted that Jesus was resurrected. But right now, James is outside the house, and he's saying things like, please ignore my brother when his blood sugar gets low, he thinks he's Messiah. He's try they're trying to excuse Jesus' behavior because it, there's a big crowd, and he's combating the teachers. We're well, not supposed to do that. Because the one thing I, I've noticed about families is that we do two things very well. Families fight and families love. And we as the family of God are no different because we are still broken people in this little room together. The biggest problem in church is when we try to act like we're different. The biggest problem that happens in the family of God is when a fight happens and we don't allow the love to heal the wounds. And for that we must always look to our Father. This is one of the many things that we'll be doing today here as we gather around this table together is going to our Father. We'll talk to Him, tell Him our hurts and our troubles, and ultimately we will gather around this table together and we will be reminded that there is one bread and one cup, which is the sacrifice of Jesus. And so then we are one body together as a family of God. And in the work of that shed blood, we work together. We walk together. And we seek out and invite others into the family, as unique as it might be. Because as we walk this trail, we are reminded that together, we are heading home. And as a family, we will gather together in that great home one day, around a celebration table that will never end. Would you join me in the communion service? It will either be up on the screen. There were some large prints uh, out on the table at least. Bobby, I'm going to attempt to turn this on because I don't want to here. And we'll hope it works. Let's see if we will watch it. Nope. All right. <laughs> I'll do that. Let me make sure I turn this off because I don't need that to happen again. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to use orange. Ah, it's one of those days.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift your hearts to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right in our hands to Blessed are you, our Alpha and Omega, whose strong and loving arms encompass the universe. For with your eternal word and Holy Spirit, you are forever one God. Through your word, you created all things and called them good. And in you, we live and move and have our being. When we fell into sin, you did not deserve us. You made covenant with your people Israel and spoke through prophets and teachers. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, and heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is Jesus Christ who called you Abba Father. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own and filled them with a longing for a peace that would last and for a justice that would never fail. In Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death, destroyed their power forever. You raised from the dead that same Jesus, who now reigns with you in glory, and poured upon us your Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant. On the night before meeting with death, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to the disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here, and on these gifts, that in the breaking of this bread and the drinking of this juice, we may know the presence of the living Christ, and be renewed as the body of Christ for this world, redeemed by Christ's blood. As the grain and grapes once dispersed in the fields, and now united on this table here as the bread and juice, so we may and all your people be gathered from every time and place into the unity of your eternal household and feast at your table forever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you now to stand as we sing, Open My Eyes That I Might See, verses 1, 2, and 3 on page 454.
take a quick look at our announcements. A uh, reminder that the Tuesday and Thursday Bible studies uh, are done for our summer break. Uh, the same for youth, though we might attempt to try to do something uh, during the summer months. Just keep an ear out. We'll send out a, a note if we try. Uh, you'll also see there are two cases of books out in the hall outside of the church office. And there's also that giant yellow box. Uh, if anybody wants some books, you are more than welcome to dig through and see what you would like to take. Uh, if you would be interested in reading, praying, doing children's moments, uh, anything like that, please grab a hold of me. I, I love seeing people uh, doing it. I was really proud. I was sure Lois was going to tell everybody that the pastor made her do it. Uh, <laughs> So it, it, it is. It's good to be up here and to try things out. Uh, let's see. Uh, are my graduates, both high school and college, uh, the, the church got you a present. If you haven't gotten one yet, uh, get a hold of me. Uh, they're in the church office. We'll make sure we get it to you. Uh, the Ann Robinson Circle still has a few packages of, uh, see now where am I? Is it pecans or pea pods? Yes. <laughs> yes, okay. I literally got pecan, 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 pecan all the way across. So we'll just leave that alone. But anyways, the, the circle has for sale. Uh, you can get a hold of it. And as always, if there's any more prayer concerns, any announcements, or anything like that, you can get a hold of Patty, and she'll get it into the bulletin. If you have announcements or prayer requests that you would like to go out to the church, uh, you can get a hold of Valerie or myself, and we'll get one to the poetry. Are there any other announcements? Yes. You have one more chance to see Into the Wood. It is a wonderful production by the Chapmanville Regional High School. Um, we saw it last night, and I am just amazed at the amount of talent that God has blessed us with in this region. Um, it's all children, all, not children, it's high school kids, but they are fantastic. It is, uh, Robin is the musical director, and uh, if you have missed this, then you have really missed quite a production. It's ten dollars, two thirty this afternoon at Chapmanville Regional High School. And if you can't find Robin for like the next week to two weeks, it's because she decided to cry, about, crawl under a rock, and just hide. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> any other announcements? All right, would you pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you because it has been a, such a good day. We thank you for the rich blessings in which we've received today. Lord, we just pray that everything that we've received that is of you, Lord, that you would write it upon our hearts, that as we go from here now, we would carry it with us and be ready to share it with anybody that you would direct into our steps. Bless us, O Lord, and use us. And we pray this all in Jesus' precious name and all the children of God said. Amen. Amen.